Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. And today we're going to be talking about how to do your own trademark search. This is the first video in a series about filing your own trademark applications without an attorney. The first step in filing a trademark application is to do a search. And really you should do a search even if you're not gonna do a trademark application, just whenever you start a business. So the trademarks are covering the name of, could be your business, your product, your service, whatever phrase or words or even symbols you're using in conjunction with the sale of your product or service that identifies you to your customers or clients. So you're doing this even if you don't file a formal trademark application. When you start a new business with a new name and get that registered domain name for your business, set up your website, get your YouTube channel, whatever it is, you want to do a search then, even if you're not going to file a trademark application, just in case someone else already has dibs. There are two main places you're going to search. One is the USPTO database, the trademark database. The other thing you're going to do is you're just going to do a plain old web search, which could be via Google, DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you want to use. The reason you're doing these two places primarily is because those are the searches that the trademark office does. If you file a trademark application, your trademark gets assigned to an examiner who does a search. And those are the two main places they're going to be searching. Trademark database, which includes applications for trademarks, as well as registered trademarks, as well as ones that are expired, all that. And they're going to search, do a Google search, or use some kind of search engine to do a search on the web. So first, we're going to go ahead and do the trademark search. You go to USPTO.gov and you go to the pull down menu for under trademarks and it has a selection for searching trademarks. I've actually already clicked on that and gotten to that page here. Here's where you search the trademark database tests. When you click on this, you have a couple of options. One is just a basic search. The next is a structured search where you can use Booleans like and and things like that, which we're gonna look at. And then also you have a free form search. Personally, I don't ever use the free form search because I find that it doesn't work very well, but it might get better over time. Let's start with the basic search. So this is where you're just searching the trademark database for trademarks or applications that have the same phrase. You can pick whether or not you're searching both live and dead or just live or just dead. Live and dead means, live means it's an application or a registration that is still existing and dead means it's expired or been abandoned. I think it's best to search under both live and dead because you want to find out if anybody has this phrase or has ever used this phrase because that might be important not just for your trademark application but also for marketing purposes. So we're going to be doing searches using a couple made up business names or program names. One is Ceres Toys. Ceres is a Roman goddess. Um, it's also an asteroid. And we're just say this is the toy store that you're thinking of coming up with. So you're just gonna put in Ceres Toys here, just the basic, and submit the query and see if anything comes up. Nothing came up. So you might think, oh yay, I can file my trademark application. Uh, okay, it's, that's not enough. It's not just the exact phrase you're using. It's also anything that sounds like it. And it's also things that are using just the most important words in the category, but not the unimportant words. So what I mean is it could be series that doesn't have the word toys, but it is a toy store. <laughs> okay. So it would overlap with yours. Also, you want to look at other spellings of series that have the same sound. So let's say series. That does come up with something but this is actually a sex toy. I'm not that worried about it because in your case, you are looking for one that's about children's toys. And this is an important illustration because there's always gonna be something that comes up or most of the time something that comes up that is in a category that has theoretical overlap but isn't actually overlapping. So now we're gonna do a structured search. So in the search term, we're gonna put series 
And in the other search term, we're going to put toy. So the idea is, is we want any biz, any trademark that has series and then is a like toy store or something like that. But maybe they don't have the word toys in the name. Under toys, you have to pick what field it's going to be in. So this is going to be the goods and services. That's it's some kind of goods and services involving toys. You want the operator to be and. So if you don't put and in here, you're going to get or. Okay, so it means it'll be everything that has to do with toys, which is like, I don't know, a million trademarks. So we don't want that. And then series want to be in the trademark. Ah, so here we do have a trademark for series studio. This is a online retail store service that features a number of different things, including toys. Now, something to look at here is this trademark application is only a 1B application. What does that mean? 1B means it's intent to use. This person is not actually using this in commerce yet. They haven't opened this store. So oh, as of the time they filed this, of course. It was filed back in December. They haven't filed the next state of the next form that says that they have actually used it. This could be really important to you because if you know if they never use it, then it eventually will become abandoned. However, a 1B application can be pending for years. So if you file your application, you may have to wait until theirs is no longer pending and is, and is dead and then you can get yours. So you can be suspended for a very long time, which is super annoying. If I find something like this, the next thing I do is look up what's going on with this application. So you go to tsdr.uspto.gov. This is the, the place where you find out what's the actual status of the application, the behind the scenes file. So I'm going to cut and paste the serial number in here and see what's going on. It's still being awaited to be assigned to an examining attorney. They're supposed to assign examiners to trademark applications at about three months. As of right now, it is May and this application was filed in uh, December. They're behind right now um, because of everything that's going on in the world. Now here you can look at what things have they filed already. They had done a preliminary amendment here. Ah, so here they did a preliminary amendment where they have incorporated their business. So they first filed as a sole proprietorship and then they incorporated those, their business. This shows you that they're taking more steps in forming their business. And so that's important information for you to, to know. What I would do next with this is I would do a Google search or any other search engine. To see if they come up. Um, it doesn't come up when I just search it like that. Does it come up like this? It doesn't seem like, well, maybe that's what this is going to be. This is a, that doesn't look like it. So it doesn't look like they necessarily have actually launched. Ooh, here's something that actually is important for us that may not be the same place, but may be overlapping. There's a series studio that has an Instagram that makes handmade fine linen baby rattles, toys, and quilts. They have a website, so I'm going to click over to that. I always scroll to the bottom to see if they have a date. Okay, 2021. And then they have little items here that are for sale. This might be the series studio business. We don't know if they've actually made any sales, but it looks like they are, they do have their website up. So this is going to be important for the person who's thinking of launching this series toys. Now let's do a different search. This is going to be a search on the trademark database for a different business. This is going to be a pretend business that I've created. So it's going to be Weinstein Financial Consulting. So let's say I decided to do some consulting work. So I'm going to search that. Nothing comes up with those phrases, but there could be something that is similar. Now, Weinstein is my last name and there are special rules 
for if you use your name in a trademark. It's something to be aware of and we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to do a search for Weinstein and Financial. There is a dead trademark for Money Matters with Grace W. Weinstein. And this is for in the category of printed publications. So this is a, a newsletters about uh, financial stuff. But it was a 1B application, which we already talked about. It was an intent to use application. It looks like they didn't launch it. And this application is dead as of back way back in 1999. So I'm not worried about this one. I also may search consulting. Now, let's say I'm starting this Weinstein financial consulting business. And right now I'm just doing financial consulting, purely financial consulting, but maybe I'm thinking eventually I'm going to do courses and, and, and online Zoom seminars or something like that. So let's do search for under courses. Let's search under seminar. Let's search under classes. Let's search under education. Education doesn't mean school. It also means um, any kind of information or education. So it could be courses, eBooks, all kinds of different things. So here, the Weinstein company had used to have a trademark that was under provision of information on various entertainment topics and education and entertainment services involving audio, media, television, radio. So this is a very broad uh, trademark application that was originally filed 1B, but it was then issued as a 1A. They, a they actually were using it. However, it was canceled in 2013 because for trademarks, you don't get the trademark forever and ever. You have to file documents every so many years proving that you're still using it. And if you don't do that because you're either not using it or because you didn't know about the fact that you have to do these filings, then you're, you will lose your trademark. So in this case, they lost it. So I'm not worried about this. Occasionally though, the business will still exist and still be doing that thing. And so it could come up in another way, but I'm not worried about this particular trademark because it's no longer registered. Now let's go back to the series toys and do the next set of searches. So the next thing you're going to search are just an internet search. Now you could use Google, you could use DuckDuckGo, you could use Bing, whatever. What I recommend is that you do two different searches, one under something like DuckDuckGo where they're not doing any tracking and then one just a regular Google search, but I'd use the uh, Google Incognito. The reason you want to use either Google an incognito window or you want to use DuckDuckGo is so that way your prior behaviors on the internet are not affecting the results of the search. So I opened up a new incognito window and I'm just going to do a Google search, which is how my browser is set up to do. So I'm doing ser series toys. Now, typically, no, you're not going to go my up my location. Typically, you for, I first run it in quote marks, uh, but I don't think that we're going to get anything in quote marks. So, series toys. Now, you're almost always going to have some kind of result, but some of the results that you're going to get are things that actually don't really matter. So, you're going to get location results because in here, series isn't just a goddess. Series is also the name of a town in California. So Google is going to say, oh, well, you want to know about toy stores or places that sell toys in Sears, California. Walmart sells toys. Okay, so I, we're not really worried about Walmart here. There's a toy store called Nico's Toy House. Not worried about that. And then I'd go down and look and make sure there's nothing else here. So you're going to get some location based stuff. Then you're probably going to get some search results that are from Amazon, Walmart, eBay, Etsy, places like that, where they have set up their websites and their databases and things such that for anything that you search, you're going to get an Amazon link. But these Amazon links aren't necessarily to anything. It literally has nothing in here. Okay. So, and this Walmart is just for the Walmart that's in the town of series, but there's going to be a lot of results that are meaningless. Um, Pinterest is the same kind of thing where you may not get, it's an, it's nonsense results. Now here's a person 
who has a collection called Series Toys. I don't know what that has to do with Series, but most of these results are about the town of Series. I would go down, I would keep pulling up page after page. I would go down at least to page 10 until I get to a point where it's, their things are completely meaningless. So I'm just gonna skip to page the 10th page even though I would normally look at every single page. Here, we're getting things that have nothing to do with it. We get some sex toys again. Um, and so at this point, I don't think that's gonna be probably any good results. I also may go to DuckDuckGo and do a search. One of the reasons is that DuckDuckGo, you're not gonna get ads and things on there that are in the line of the results. Ads are separate. So it's helpful to understand what the results are. Now, Ceres is a dwarf planet. So there may be toys that are literally about the dwarf planet. And that's what this is here. Ceres, the dwarf planet, there are toys about that. Ceres toys are literally toys about the goddess or toys about the asteroid. This could be a problem with the toys about the asteroid, but if your series toys is just like a random name that you picked for your toy store, then we're not really worried. Here's a market that's allegedly called series. This is one of those examples where these things have nothing to do with series. I don't even understand what that has to do with it. Um, the best toy stores in series California from yp.com. We got some of these random Amazon links. Rainbow Toys was a toy store in a town of series. So the same thing here is I would go down, look at as many results as I can. The series TOS is for a business that copyright 2007. So it's probably not around now that has nothing to do with toys. So you just keep scrolling down and looking at all of these various links. Now we're going to do the same kind of search for Weinstein financial consulting. First, I'm going to do a search in quote marks. Now we get Potts Weinstein Financial Consulting, which is a business that I used to have actually. Um, and we get results up that are about me. This is not where I live anymore, 1099 Moore Street. Uh, that's a place I, that was a business of my address of mine a very long time ago. So we're really just getting businesses that I used to have and websites that have articles that I wrote. So if you are a different Weinstein and you want to get a trademark on Weinstein Financial Consulting, you have to look at these results. When you're using a name, it becomes more complicated because you typically are allowed to open up a business in your own name. There's special rules for that, but you may not be able to get registered trademark if I had already trademarked Pots Weinstein Financial Consulting, which I didn't. So now, we're going to just search it without quote marks. So here you're getting ads for financial consulting. That's one of the things that will happen. There's a Weinstein Financial Group. So let's learn about that. Weinstein Financial Group is an LLC that's in Ohio. So one of the things to remember is Weinstein Financial Consulting. The word consulting is just a generic description for what this person is doing. Weinstein Financial Group, same kind of thing. Group is just like they're literally a group. That's not going to make them different. Also the word financial. The word financial is just about money. So you could have Weinstein Financial Consulting and Weinstein Money Consulting, which sounds kind of weird, but financial and money are pretty much the same thing, generic term for the kind of thing that you're doing. Or Weinstein Investment Consulting might also not be different enough. It's not just the exact word you use, it's how important are those words, how unique are those words. Going back to the Weinstein Financial Consulting, this is my whole business, um, there's people who would just happen to be financial advisors who have the name Weinstein in their name. So you can see here, if you have a business name that is something fairly high level in general, you're gonna run into trouble where there's a lot of other results of people who have businesses similar to yours instead of having kind of a, a made up word or a random arbitrary type of name of a business. So I also recommend that you search social media and for domain names. Sometimes 
social media sites like Twitter or Facebook, if someone else is doing their marketing via some social media site, it may not come up on a Google search or a DuckDuckGo search. And it's going to be important to you, number one, because they could also be using a business on the same name, which could be a trademark issue for you. But number two, it could be an issue because you're not going to get the Twitter handle that you want. So you want to know about that ahead of time. So for Twitter, you can just put in twitter.com and then it'll automatically be searching Twitter. And then you can put in series toys and you're going to get the top tweets that might have serious toys in it, which could have relevant things. You're gonna get the latest tweets. You also look at people, no results for serious toys. It's gonna to be an exact search. Some of these are people who have handles that have the word series in it, which obviously that was a, a goddess, so people are going to use that. If there's a hashtag being used, that also might come up here, so you might click on that. It's probably going to be about series, the dwarf planet. But you can also, when you click on that, you're also going to get people. So you want to make sure that you're always doing a search at a very high level. So not just series toys, but also do searches under just series and see what comes up. Obviously, there's a police department series. It's going to be things like that. There's series news. There's going to be many results that have the word series because it's a word that means many things. I always would scroll down here and look at all the different ones and see if anything is related to toys or anything that my client is planning to go into. So maybe they're not just gonna do a toy store, maybe they're also gonna sell books, for example. If you hire someone else to do a trademark search for you, they're gonna search in other databases too. They're gonna to search in the state databases. They're going to search in uh, domain names. They're gonna search in the databases for corporate name registrations. Is it a good idea for you to do all those searches yourself? Probably for your own state will be helpful for you for the future. And whether or not you do all that searching really depends upon your budget and your amount of time that you have. The trademark office is probably not gonna be searching all those databases, but it may come up later if there is a business that is in some other state or even in your state that doesn't have a website, hasn't registered a, tr a trademark application, but they are using that name. You just have never heard of them before. So because, and it'll come up in some other kind of database. If you have a large budget, it makes sense to pay for all those searches to be done. If you have a lot of time, you could do those searches yourself. So for example, here is where trademarks and service marks are for the state of California and they have a trademark search tool. If I just put in series, I'm not gonna put in anything else. There are a couple trademarks that, in California trademarks that have the word series in them. This one that's active is about series community project. This is probably not relevant to ours, but it is something to just be aware of. You can also search in the business databases. So for the business databases, it's gonna be for each state, and this is gonna have a business if there's a business with that name. In California, you search for corporate names separate from LLC names. In some states, there's one database that has the trademarks, state trademarks and state uh, name registrations, as well as corporate names and LLC names all in one database, so it's very convenient. I wanna just search for series just to kind of see what's available. There's 160 entities. Many of them are things that have absolutely no relevance. You can see here, it's, it's just addresses and things that probably are holding real estate properties. I'm gonna put in series toys. Uh, and also you're gonna to have to ser search the corporate name, a corporation name separately. So if I just put in series without the toys, you're gonna get 213 results. If you pay for someone to do a search, they're gonna give you all these results. And this is something that's important to be aware of. If you pay for a search, you're gonna get like this 50 page document with hundreds and hundreds of results because they're doing very broad searches, which is helpful so you can try to find everything, but it also makes it so much to get through. Again, this is Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about doing your trademark search, feel free to post them below. 
and I will try to point you in the right direction. If you found this video helpful, hit a thumbs up and subscribe for any more tips about trademarks specifically, as well as any other legal issues for small business owners. Talk to you later. Bye.